Hello, welcome everyone to this new video. My name is Juliana Gonzalez and I don't play video games. Um, I'm a student of La Universidad de La Sabana. Uh, I'm on seventh semester of Comunicación Audiovisual y Multimedia and uh, our teacher of the workshop of multimedia in the model of animation, uh, Rigoberto Sáenz, gave us this homework of making a review of three different video games. Now when he said this, the first thing I thought was what am I gonna do? Because I really don't play video games. Now when I say that I don't play video games, it's not that I've never played a video game in my life. It's just that uh, whenever I need a source of entertainment, my first option is not to go to a video game. But actually then I started thinking, sometimes when I'm bored, admittedly mostly in classes, I Record to certain video games for casual play. There are games that entertain you, that are sometimes fast paced, that begin and end very quickly, you don't need to get too involved in them, and I really like them. So, this review is my recommendation actually of three and a plus one casual video games that you can play uh, if you're like me. that isn't so much into video games, but enjoys the casual fun. Alright, so let's get started. Okay guys, so the first game that we're gonna play is Plague Inc. Plague Inc. is a game developed by Endemic Creations on 2012 for mobile devices of iOS, Android and Windows Phone. It became very popular and it became the number one game uh, at a point, so that means that they started to charge for it. But as you can see, they charge 1,900 pesos, which is less than a US dollar, so it's really not that much. And since they started to charge, a lot of other companies have started to develop their own games similar to this one, just making a few alterations. But since this is one is the OG, this is the one that I want to show you and recommend to you guys. The basic premise of the game is that you are creating an illness and the pathogen that you create has to destroy the world, basically eradicate humanity, so kill all of the human beings alive and you can play in various different levels from a bacteria to a bioweapon and within this level you can play from informal level to brutal level. All of these are levels of difficulty within the game. So obviously as you go on and as you advance then it gets harder and in order to lock a new level you have to unlock the previous one. So this is kind of the dynamics of the game. There are no characters, just the illness that you're creating and the people of the world that you are trying to eliminate. But in general there is no real characters. And the way that the game works is that you begin by putting the pathogen in a country. I would recommend putting a country that has both a port and an airport because it will make it easier for the disease to cover it through borders and contaminate more countries. And the thing of the of this game is that it's a hyper realistic strategy game. So what they do is they try to put uh, super realistic facts and data of the various different countries in order to accurately represent how it would react to a disease as the one that you're creating. So you have to think very strategically to figure out how you're gonna make it so that the disease lives in every country, moves from country to country and actually infects the people within the country. So this is how you begin, just putting the, the disease in one country and um, then the little bubbles that are popping on the screen right now, these are DNA points. So DNA points are the things that you're gonna use in order to play to advance your disease. Okay, so by popping these DNA bubbles you will get DNA points and with these DNA points you can evolve your disease in various categories so the affection window is just showing how your disease is made, that is a bacteria, what it contains and then there's also the transmission, the symptoms and the abilities. So to begin the game obviously you're more focused on transmission, your goal is to get the whole world um, sick and in order for you to do this you need to be contagious so that's where you begin just trying to figure out how like what the best way to be contagious is and this is why it's an strategy game it's not just about making random choices in order to create a sickness it's to make strategic choices 
in order that it will affect the whole world. So you can you can make it that it can be transmitted through air, through water, through cattle and other animals. And also you can make it so that it has very specific symptoms based on what your objective is. So for transmission there are symptoms like sneezing and coughing and then later on once you've infected more people you start you have to start thinking about symptoms that will actually kill people. Uh, because the idea is to no. However, there's also a scientific uh, component, since this game is a realistic game, they take into account the scientific community trying to find a cure for this disease, so the idea is for you to stop the cure at all costs, and while popping the blue bubbles does help to slow down the cure, the most important thing is to make your disease or your pathogen cure resistant, so make it resistant to normal pharmaceuticals and then making it so it can modify its DNA, have genetic modifications so that it's harder to find a cure for it. So the idea is for you to kill the whole world before the cure is found. This is why it is a strategy game. The victory is achieved once you have killed everyone in the world, there's no humans left and there was no solution for your pathogen. So this is the way that Plug In works. It, it is a strategy game given the fact that it's not just random choices or watching the map on screen and seeing what happens but rather making conscious decisions in order to think oh, what's gonna be better for my uh, spread of the disease and then what's gonna be better for the mortality rate and all of this. So you have to decide on transmission and symptoms on when to choose what because if you choose the thing at the wrong time maybe the infected people will die while they're still healthy the people and then the disease will be eradicated because the last or maybe you're not focusing that much on resisting the cure and so the cure will arrive first and you will lose so yeah it's about making super conscious decisions I would give it um, a little critique that is that the DNA points the only way of getting them is by waiting uh, ob obviously, once you have started to to infect more people, then you can get more DNA points. But in other difficulties, or as the game advances and there's already a lot of people or most people invaded, then it's in a lot of people or most people infected. Then there's really no way for you to get DNA points that isn't buying them, which is the idea. So I would give it an alternative way to get DNA points because th those are the ones that will actually make the game interesting because otherwise you're just watching <laughs> red dots pop up on the screen. You cannot uh, do anything else. So I would, I would say that. I would say that there should be a better reward system with the DNA points that you can get them in a different way so that you can continue playing and advancing your illness and you don't get stuck because it's really frustrating when the cure is uh, advancing and you aren't able to just because you aren't getting any DNA points. But other than these little facts, I think the dynamics of the game are great. I think it's really entertaining. I think it gives the player a possibility to play as God. So it's very entertaining. You don't need to start it and finish it in one sitting. You can continue it on. Um, as long as you want, you can leave it there and then come back to it later and you can even start a new a new game every time because actually it's not that emotionally invo involving that you might think that you need to see what happens in each one of the, of the games. Um, it's always the same story, it's always the same objective, so it's just for a little bit of fun, of, of challenging yourself, of trying to make it uh, so that you win. Uh, it's a really fun game, I would give it in the Hooli meter, that is my pointing system for casual games, I would give it an 8 out of 10. So the next thing that we are gonna play is Hot Dog Bush or Bush's Hot Dog, it depends on where you're playing it. This is a game that I found out uh, through Freeb. Uh, Freeb is a website for <laughs> games precisely like this one. So it's a game that requires a uh, flash player and that you can play on your computer. I think now there is more applications uh, for it. So 
it has uh, moved through platforms. It has been around four years and years, probably more than a decade. And it's a very simple cooking game. And the premise of this game, as you can see in the intro of the game itself, is that president or ex-president of the United States, George W. Bush, has been kicked out of the White House. And now he wonders what he's gonna do with his life and he gets the idea to sell hot dogs on the street. I know the premise sounds hilarious, it is, this is what makes it so fun. So you can play a speed run that is just trying to see how many hot dogs you can sell on a day, but also you can play the career one. So as you can see it uh, has the setup of a basic cooking game, it has a grill, it has the ingredients, but it is a cooking game in which you have to deliver the products immediately. So as the customers arrive, they will an image will appear with their order, whether they want a hot dog, if they want it with sauce, if they want it without sauce, and, and all of this. There can be five customers per at the same time. So if you have five, you're full. If you have zero, the, there's five that you can get but in, but in order for the customers to arrive you need to take the money away so if there's money on the counter the customers won't be able to arrive so in this case uh the main character would be george w butch but it is also the player so it's um the player playing as the ex-president uh, trying to sell the hot dogs so actually after the introduction there's not much told about the story of the president it is just a first person point of view game but um but you can see the the customers also as characters uh, there's they repeat themselves over and over and over so it's not that easy to know about them they don't have any intrinsic characteristics they just have what they look like and the, the order they're asking for so um yeah this is the basic story of the game it's a really fun game also doesn't involve a lot of narrative just this main story and then you have one objective and that's the objective for the entire game of course as the days go by the levels get harder and harder uh, each day you have to get a certain amount of money as the day progresses you have to get more money than the day before so you have to attend more customers and as you can see on screen at the ending you will have a lot of different ingredients that you have to cook so a lot of different orders can come up from that so you have drinks you have french fries you have the traditional hot dogs but you also have burgers um so that's it starts getting a little bit frustrating uh, you need to pick up everything but you also need to cook everything my strategy for this game is to just get as many breads on the on the counter and as many meats on the grill and then um, just assemble everything so that when customers arrive you give it to them and then let all the money on the on the counter before taking it off while you cook the things so that uh, you have things cooked before more customers can arrive. This is the final level on the Yankee Stadium and you have coke, lemonade, french fries, hot dogs, burgers, uh, onions, meat and uh, the hot dogs. So the thing is that as you can see these customers look a little bit angry. That is because they have been waiting for a long time. A customer will get progressively angry as the, or pro progressively angrier as the time passes and if it gets too and if he gets too angry he will leave so the idea is to not let any customer leave and if he gets angry enough it will, he will pay less so you will have given your product for less money than and you need a lot of money so um, the idea is to serve everyone as fast as you can and yeah that's basically it there's thieves so you have to click on the thieves so that they don't leave without paying it has little trinkets like that but the main premise of the game is you are George Bush, you are cooking hot dogs, you serve the players what they want to get, the order that they are telling you. You have to do it very fast. Uh, if you leave the food on the grill for too long it will burn and yeah that's basically it. So it's a really fun game, it involves a lot of, of stress uh, since you get the pressure of attending the customers super fast 
and normally what happens is that you don't have enough uh, hand coordination to assemble everything so fast and to give someone one thing and then the other other thing then you start mixing orders and everything it's a really fun game uh, i think the dynamics are pretty clear the story is pretty uh, straightforward it's me against them so i give them what they want and i get my reward and you have a very clear objective which is just um what am i gonna do uh, how much money do I have to make? And that's it every day. And if you finish your career, then you get enough money to get back on the White House. So that's a really, a really good game. And I think it's super casual. You don't need to get too involved. And my review in the Who Limiter would be 10 out of 10. It's uh, fantastic. And the story is very fun. Uh, then another game that we're gonna play is Sandwich Maker. So <laughs> Sandwich Maker, it's uh, like six to five Sandwich Maker. It's actually the name. Six to five Sandwich Maker is actually a game by Disney, and uh, the idea of this game is to that you are. Like, it's a game of the franchise of Lilo and Stitch. So the idea of this game is that you're experimenting 6 to 5 and in the story, in the universe, experiment 6 to 5 is like the companion of the bad guy, is the only experiment that can fluently talk and he actually has a lot of powers, he actually has uh, a lot of things that he's capable of because he has superior intelligence, but what he enjoys is making sandwiches. So what they made was this game and this game is just stacking sandwiches, it's a, it's a puzzle game because what you need to do is you need to figure out what goes in the sandwich and what doesn't go in the sandwich, it's very simple. You start with a toast and you end the sandwich with a toast always and that's how you uh, get level after level, it's just by closing the sandwich you pass the level. So you have to put everything that goes in the sandwich, so meat, ketchup, um, lettuce, all of these ingredients, like edible ingredients in a sandwich and you have to avoid the rotten ingredients or things that do not belong in a sandwich like a boot or a piece of uh, fish bones. Um, the thing is that if you miss the bread then you have to keep stacking until another piece of bread comes. As it gets higher it gets <laughs> much harder to not catch the bad ingredients because um, because like the, the food gets too high and it's very hard to maneuver it. Um, so you have to just get the, that bread fast. Um, that's it, that's the whole game. It gets a little repetitive. I used to love it when I was a, a girl. That's when, that's why I decided to do it for this review, to recommend it. I still recommend it, but I think anyone that's capable of playing it for more than five minutes, it's a little bit crazy because that's all you have to do. So after a while, it gets a little bit tedious. There is only one character and it's Experiment 65 and if you didn't look at the like of, um, at the franchise of Lila and Stitch then you probably don't know very well who he is so and, and there's not not enough reflection of his character within the game for us to figure that out which would be something fun you know if at each level something new happened or his preference on food even it would be like a little bit more of storytelling that unfortunately doesn't happen here. I think the game is great. I think if you're super bored and you just want to play like a fun game, a puzzle game that isn't actually that much a puzzle game, you don't have to think that much, this is the game for you. I just think it gets a little bit tedious, that's why I would give it a 6 out of 10, but I still love this game. I just think that it could do more. Uh, Alright guys, and um that's basically it. I tried playing another game that was the Kim Possible game that was more of a of an adventure game but it was too difficult to play. The platform wasn't working very well um, and I got too frustrated. I didn't even make it past the half of the first level so I couldn't put that in uh, but I wanted to say to you just in case you remember Kim Possible games being really cool. They're really not good. Um, all of these games that I mentioned before are rated by the SRB for everyone, like an E for everyone. This is a game that anyone could play and they all came out, um, as I said, within the 2000s. So 
yeah that's that's basically all we have for today thank you for listening to me and if you're like me i really really recommend you to play games like these ones they're really fun and they can give you an insight into the world of video games that you may not have subscribe like uh, i hope the teacher gives me a very good grade <laughs> bye